We start with a puzzle. Do two objects free falling from rest have parallel paths? And does your answer to this question have any consequence for the shape of the Earth? The solution will be given near the end of the video. Welcome to this nothing nerdy video on free fall acceleration. Here is the statement from the IB Physics Guide. Students should be able to determine the acceleration of free fall experimentally. In this video, we will also show you how to apply the equations of motion to solve free fall problems. Here is a typical multiple choice question on this topic. You should be able to answer it by the end of the video. When objects are acted on by gravity and are free to fall, they accelerate at approximately 10 meters per second squared. As you may know, the actual figure varies slightly around the world, and the average value to three significant figures is 9.81 meters per second squared, but a question will make clear which value you should use. Remember that the acceleration is only uniform if there is no air resistance. This is why questions normally mention that air resistance is negligible. The exam style question you saw at the beginning of this video will analyse a falling object. The equations of motion are appropriate for this sort of calculation because they're an excellent example of a uniform acceleration if we neglect air resistance, which is a reasonable re assumption often. In many questions, the object falls from rest, which means that initial velocity u is zero. It is also important to take into account the direction of the motion. For a decelerating object, its velocity and accelerations are in opposite directions, which we show by deciding which direction is positive and using negative numbers for the opposite direction. There is a variety of ways to measure the acceleration due to gravity. Firstly, there is direct measurement. You can electronically time a fall from rest through a specific distance and use the equations of motion to calculate small g. A metallic ball can be held by an electromagnet and released at the same moment. A timer starts and the timer switches off when the ball breaks the circuit at the end of the fall. Here, the ball falls 1.28 meters in 0.512 seconds. The formula relating acceleration due to gravity with time and distance is given here. The initial velocity is zero. Then we can rearrange the formula to find g and substitute in the values measured in the experiment. And here we find the result. We state it to three significant figures since the distance and time were measured to this precision, but the uncertainties in the experiment may well mean that we would be better advised to state two only significant figures, 9.8 meters per second squared. It is also possible to use data from a ticker timer or photograph to draw a graph of motion and use the gradient to find the acceleration. Here is a falling ball. The motion of this falling ball is recorded in the table. We know from the equation that distance is proportional to time squared, so these are the values we plot. The graph of s against t squared is a straight line through the origin. We can find the gradient of the graph and then use it to find little g as follows. We add the triangle and measure its rise and run, which works out as 4.9 units. Using the formula, we can substitute in the gradient and the result is 9.8 meters per second squared. If you can make a calculation from data on a graph, this is preferable to an individual calculation, such as in the first example, since there is more data and so the uncertainty is reduced. Other equations, such as the time period of a pendulum, include small g as a constant, and you can plot a graph of length against time period squared and use its gradient to calculate g. Can you see why the gradient would be g divided by 4 pi squared? You could pause the video here to check that you understand the statement. This question is looking at the distance fallen during the third second of motion 
and that's between t equals 2 and t equals 3. We know that the initial velocity u is 0 because it's falling from rest and we take the down direction as positive and we say a equals plus 10. S equals ut plus a half at squared is the correct formula to use to find the distance travelled. We want to know the distance in the first two seconds, first of all, and so we substitute in and we find that that is 20 metres. Then we look at the distance travelled in the first three seconds, we substitute in and we find that that's 45 metres. But we want to know the distance only in the third second and therefore we subtract the one distance from the other distance and the answer is 25 metres. The answer to this puzzle, whether two falling objects have parallel paths, is no, because the reason they fall is gravitational attraction. So all falling objects are pulled towards the centre of the Earth, and therefore fall at a very slight angle to each other, which would be too small to measure, but is nevertheless real. However, when we make our calculations, we do assume that the gravitational field is uniform and the acceleration does not change. This is a valid assumption, but it does ironically imply that the Earth is flat. Thank you.